Hello and welcome to another Budget and Legget video. We are doing a radiator in a 2005 Renault Megane. Now this one is an automatic and the only difference that makes is the radiator is slightly bigger. When I was ordering the rad for this there was two different sizes and the automatic one's bigger. Just kind of be aware of that, you know, there is a lot of different sizes and a lot of different parts and you can easily get the wrong part which can make a nightmare. Now what I like to do I've never done one of these, so hopefully we can both learn something. But when you have the new part beside you, you can see exactly where it clips in, how many pipes are, and absolutely everything. Now you can see these little clips here, this is where the actual radiator would sit. You have the mounting point here, and so it's good to look at the new part, so you get an idea of how you actually can fit it. Now, it is very, very tight down here, and what I'm hoping I can do is remove the actual um, cross member here. As we can see, there's just no room in it. So what I'm hoping to do is remove this cross member, which just looks like a couple of bolts, one at this end, come all the way across, one at that end. We've got a few little um, bolts in between. We're gonna have the bonnet catch to deal with. There's a couple of uh, bolts I can see, like there's one here. That must be holding something, I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll see once we get it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these few bolts first and then see where we... Now what I want to take off first is this 13mm bolt here, there's one at each end. Now there's a couple of bolts hidden, like there's one underneath the actual bumper here which holds on the headlight. And there's a couple of little torques as we go along. Now there are a T30. I'm not 100% sure yet what they're actually for because I can't quite see underneath so I'm just going to remove them because they're going to have to come off when I take this cross member off anyway. Now there's a little blanking plate here which I think... Yeah. Now this little pin I've just pulled out here which I thought was a blanking plate is actually for the radiator. So we've got two pins here which goes all the way down which actually holds the top of the radiator onto this cross member. So we need to take them out too. I'm just going to finish off taking these and hopefully I can just take off this cross member and that's it. I don't have to take off the whole front bumper and everything. It can be a nightmare. There's also air conditioning in this. So there's going to be a radiator in front of the actual um, main radiator, but that shouldn't get in our way for what we're doing. Now, I'm just going to disconnect the top headlight bolt, but I think I'm going to have to anyway, so yeah, as we can see, that is very loose now, which is good. Next thing I'm going to take off is the air intake, that just unclips and pulls out. As you can see that's now off, it has to get out of the way anyway. So I'm going to do the other side now. Just have to take your time with this because there's going to be a few bolts we could possibly miss. So just take your time and you'll be all right. Also we have to be careful of the middle just here, sorry just here on my hand is, where the um, bonnet catches. So we want to be careful we don't do any damage there. There's going to be a cable and stuff there. Hopefully we shouldn't have to disconnect it, we just move it to the side. That's what I'm hoping. It's going to be the quickest and easiest way. I've just noticed two more connections there. Now that is actually the bonnet the bonnet latch. There's two torques in there which we're going to have to remove. Now this pin as well. So there's a little catch in it. Just pull the catch back and lift up the whole pin underneath it. doing like the other one did. So with this I'm going to pull the pin back and just get my flat base screwdriver in there and lift it up. 
and as we can see that's come all the way up so right inside there there's a little hole and if you get something you can actually see the pin here if you get something just lift the lift the pin up and this will slide straight out so lift the little clip in there so you just lift that out that should disconnect the radiator from the actual cross member now as i can see here also we have a couple of these stupid plastic clips that hold the bumper in now they are a nightmare to get out because they never particularly work properly you're supposed to be able to screw them out with a thing for a flat blade screwdriver to go in but they never work properly i don't know why car manufacturers use them yeah it's not working properly the best way to do it that's just come off complete these are little clips i'm on about that's just popped up complete this should you should be able to get a flat blade screwdriver in there lift out the center which releases the little pins which takes the clip out but they never work there's a couple more i'm going to take off them that will disconnect the top of the bumper from the cross member and as we can see that is loose but it's still tight so I'm hoping it's just these two little torques that are right in here and then this should come off. Now you might not be able to see them if I get closer maybe. You can just see them just there. Two little torques. Now as you can see what I've done is I've just pulled the front of the bumper out just so I can get to these torques and hopefully this should be the last bit I need to disconnect. They're still T30, so they're all T30 torques. But I'm just hoping this is going to get me. It's just no roof. Now, nah, good old air tools. going to make my life a lot easier. Now all you've got to do now is be careful and wiggle this. Be careful you don't break the little clips on the lights. Now um, I more or less got it out, my compressor was on so you couldn't really hear what I was saying. But just kind of angle it going up towards the windscreen. Now there is still a few things connected like we can see the horn, we've got some wires here. But I'm hoping I can just move it out of the way enough so I can get to the radiator. That's the plan. Or even maybe move it forward a bit. Doesn't really matter which way now as we can see I can actually lay it on the engine and now I can see the radiator and the air conditioning rad all in one kind of unit and this is where now I need to hope that I've got the right rad what I've got is as you can see we've just got absolutely no room to film this my hands and everything's going to get in the way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this radiator then I'm going to film once I got it out and show you basically how I got it out and what I disconnected. I think it's going to be the easiest way because there's just no way I'm going to be able to get down there and film it at the same time. All I can say is what an absolute nightmare. What I did first was I disconnected the fans. So there was two um, clips for the fans. So one here and one there. Which allowed me to take the fan unit off which you can see is there. That gave me a little bit more room. Then what I had to do was try and take out the old radiator. Now... The problem is with these clips, they're no problem to get off, but when they put them in the wrong place, you can't get to anything. So on this top clip, I had to disconnect from the engine. The bottom clip, lucky enough, the clip was in the right place, so I had no problem with the bottom pipe. Now, we had a problem. On the opposite side, you have two little pipes, one on the top, one on the bottom. Now I couldn't get to the bottom pipe, I just couldn't get to it. The clip was on underneath and even, even on the lift I couldn't get to the pipe. So what I had to do was, I had to smash it off. Now I left the pipe on there and I got a big bar and I was making sure I was hitting on the radiator. So I smashed that off which allowed me to get to the, the clip in the end. It didn't make a difference that I was doing to that rad because obviously I was changing it. Now you're taking this rad out and you're not changing it then good luck with the bottom clip. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on in such a way where I can get to the clip again. It's not going to be underneath, it's going to be at the side. The problem we had with this radiator was the leak was just right here. You can see where it's kind of wet, especially along here. So obviously the ceiling that, that had cracked. 
and it was running all the way down there and you can even see where it was a bit wet there. It was only a little leak but under pressure a little leak kind of does become a big deal. Now we've got these little clips at the back as you can see. So one little clip is for the fan on one side and the other side is the clip for the air conditioner which is here which belongs onto these ones. So this is the time we need to hope we have the right radiator. Now like I did say in the beginning there was two types of radiators and the only, the only difference is one was longer than the other one. So as we can see our rad lines up so we know we're okay on length. We've got two pipes this side so we know we're okay there and we've got two pipes facing the other way which is one here and one there. So we know this rad is r right. Say that fast. Right side, right side. What we need to be remembering is we need to take a few things off like these bottom rubber mounts have to come off on both sides. So we need them. We obviously need that pipe that's connected but not only that, we need these little rubber inserts too. So I need to take both of them out. There's that one and there's that one there we go now I need to put that in the new radiator and then we're ready to stick it now this is going to be the best I can do as regards trying to film putting it back in because there is just no room if I try and get you close I'm going to be blocking the camera you're not going to be able to see anything one thing I have done is you want to make sure all the pipes all the clips and everything is out of your way because you want to obviously try and get this radiator in without doing any damage because they're very easily damaged. As you can see I put all the rubber clips and all the rubber mounts and everything else I need to get in. Next thing is you need to get it the right way. So basically we need to go in this way where these pipes are facing the engine on the passenger side because you get it the wrong way it's not going to fit. We also with this one these two clips top and bottom and on the other side is for the air conditioning radiator. So this can be quite tricky putting the new one in. Taking the old one out doesn't really matter, you can damage it. Putting the new one in obviously you can't. So you have to be kind of careful. Put it down. Drop it into the two holes at the bottom which are the engine, the actual radiator mounts. Now as you can see I've done that but I haven't got the air conditioning rad in, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back out of the two holes at the bottom, push it as far forward as I possibly can and try and clip in this AC rad, which is going to be a lot easier said than done. So I need to get a lot closer and able to get it. Well, actually, I'll put it back in the two holes. I'm just going to have to struggle with that one for the minute I'm afraid until I kind of get it in but eventually we should hopefully get it close enough where we can get it in now that's the top one in this is the top one in hopefully fingers out the way please go in ah shit right one side's gone in not too bad. My nose is blocked. I'm dying again. It isn't helping. Now just get this side in. Now! Oh my nose! So that's now in. I'll just kind of show you if I can. Best if I can. Uh, as we can see the two top clips hopefully you can just see the air conditioning rad is clipped in there and it's clipped in there too. I have the two holes at the bottom they're full of the rubbers so they're in. This is where the actual rad fits onto them, them big pins we took out so all the rubbers are in there. So all I've got to do now is connect the two pipes this side, connect the two pipes that side and the rad is basically back in. Again there's no point in me filming this because I'm not going to be able to show you but once I get it in all them four radiator pipes I will turn the camera back on and then we need to bleed the system and I'll show you how to do that and then uh, yeah we can go from there. Now before I put the fan back in 
as we can see I've got the top pipe in obviously the, the bottom pipes really low can't be seen unfortunately got the the two pipes in this side this is the one that's at the top and the one that's at the bottom you can just about see it kind of down there so got them in handy enough before you put in the, the the actual fan just make sure everything's in place make sure the clips are right you know you've got no leaks you can put water in now just to test to make sure none of your pipes are leaking because there'd be nothing worse than um, putting the radiator back in and realizing you've forgotten a pipe or something don't sorry the fan don't start it without the fan we well, can start it for a few minutes but you need the fan after a few minutes so I've double checked all my pipes I know we're not leaking I'm going to shove the fan in now and the fan's very simple it can be a bit awkward you've got these clips here again so you've got four clips one two on the top two on the bottom which hold on the little legs of the fan there we have two power clips we have a clip here to run the fan we have another clip here as well so we need to plug them two in so we have to be careful we get these four clips actually lined up so it's sitting on the radiator top and if you don't the car won't be able to cool properly you can obviously cause overheating problems and break your new radiator and do all sorts of damage you obviously don't want to do just can take a bit of wiggling get the next push against the radiator and it's, it's about half an inch away from the clip and push against the radiator and push it down it should go into all four clips so the bottom is going in you can't see the bottom now I've got that in now I'm going to put these clips on to actually power the fan so you need to make sure they're on that's not going anywhere there you are we go somewhere in a big pile of steam your pipes are kinked or anything like that that all looks good to be fair to do for the minute is just move this down just enough for me to pour it with antifreeze now like I do say it's important to get the right antifreeze for your car um, I've got this new stuff which basically goes into anything what I'm using is Preston antifreeze it's designed to go in anything and mix with any colour, so it's just saves so much hassle. This is pure antifreeze, it hasn't been watered down. I'm going to put 5 litres in first. I'm going to start the engine then just to let it wash around. I'm going to test it, but also we have to bleed this. You can't, there's a special bleed nipple on this. We have to bleed this and then we, we will be uh, good to put everything back together. So I'm going to start the engine, I'm going to turn the heater on inside full, I'm going to let this circulate, once it gets warm I'll turn the camera on and show you how we bleed it. Right, so the radiator and the heater was on, well the, sorry the heater was on full, I'm getting nice hot air inside now so the system is bled, the fan kicked in, we know the thermostat's opened, it hasn't overheated but the way you bleed these is a joke if you ask me because it's annoying as you see right down here almost looks like a valve cap off a tyre now you just unscrew that valve cap and water starts squirting out now the problem is the water is very very hot and it can burn you so you have to be careful but obviously when you, you'll see kind of it spluttering out air and it might just be coming out a bit of steam but you, you need to wait until solid water is coming out of it until it's like a little water pistol almost screw that back up put the lid back on the expansion bottle and then you should start having hot air inside and everything should be rosy so we're at that stage now what we've got to do is basically shove everything back now what i've got to do is feed this whole cross member back into everything without Damn it, yeah, then. Which kind of sounds easier than what it actually is. It is awkward. 
But again, with a bit of wiggling, a bit of messing around, so sure the wires are back. We'll get there. something kind of like. So what I'm doing is putting the two kind of main bolts back in and I can see from the old lines on it where they line up to so try and get everything to line up in the same place and uh, I think to be fair we're fairly good there. The test will be these clips Do do. Yeah. That is not bad. So now what I've got to do is put all the screws back. All the torque. Once I've done that, well, that should be basically it then. So I'm going to tighten all these bolts. No point me showing you because I'm just tightening bolts. Once I get more time, we'll turn the camera back on and we should be fairly close. Now we are getting there. We've got to just put them stupid plastic covers that go across there and that's basically it. Just a quick one to remember. This is the little bonnet catch here, the one when you pop the bonnet, you pull this lever to lift it up. Don't forget to put this on um, because it very easy to put everything back together and forget you put this on. Now I didn't do that, obviously. That's I'm not reminding you because I did that. No. I'm just telling you not to forget it. So yeah, I had everything back together, got to put that on. What a numpty. Anyway, so I put it back on and now all I've got to do, I have to take this little thing off, which is the filler for the windscreen wiper wash. So just get that back in. Like everything on this car, just stupid and fiddly. Get that in place. It's not. And uh, just a case of putting these plastic trims on now. Now there is better ways of doing this, Renault. I don't know why you do it this way. These are horrible. All the clips break off them. They never last. They look horrible. And there's better ways of doing it. Right. So it's got to bang a few clips on there. Push them back down. These clips are an absolute waste of time. But anyway, uh, one in there. Push that down. A couple more clips. And that's basically it. We're back together. We have the rad in, it's bled. There's no leaks. Now, when you put a new radiator in, it is a good thing to check. After a couple of days, just just double check your water level to make sure it hasn't gone down and I've got to check the uh, antifreeze level again in a couple of days just let it circulate properly we should have enough because there was still a bit of antifreeze left in the engine plus I put five litres in which should be absolutely plenty for this and uh, yeah that's it so look hope it helps thumbs up and subscribe and if you get get your hands dirty see you for the next one